Welcome, welcome, and thank you for joining me here today for another piano tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're taking a look at playing second keyboard, or what is sometimes referred to as auxiliary keyboard. And that is when we have two keyboard players. One is generally first keyboard player. He does the, the piano patch, sort of like the lead keyboard player. And we have the second keyboard player who does a lot of the secondary instruments, such as strings, pads, organ or you know sometimes flutes and all that sort of embellishment to add more to the music and i've gotten a lot of questions on this you know if i'm playing strings or pads what do i play how do i play it so for one it doesn't crowd up the music it doesn't sort of overpower the main keyboard player doing the piano fills and it also doesn't ruin the song by playing just <laughs> wrong chords or wrong notes. So in today's tutorial, I'm going to share some tips with you on if you're playing strings as a second keyboard player, what you should be thinking about, how you should be thinking about it, and how you should be approaching this process. So stay tuned. So I'm going to play a song demonstration for you, the God Favored Me by Hezekiah Walker. And I've put together a little backing track with drum, bass, and some vocals to give you an example, sort of like a real life settings, and I even add piano to it. And now I'm going to play some strings to it. And then we're gonna go back and talk about sort of my mindset, you know, what I was thinking about, why I decided to do this versus that, and all that good stuff. All right, then I'm just gonna play my backing track for you and play a section of the song, then we go back and talk about it.
got some ideas and all that was improvisatory. It's not something I have written down. It's not something I sort of uh, I scored or a, a, a formula. When you're playing second keyboard, it is improvised. You know, it's kind of funny because when, when a backup singer is singing for a main singer, usually the backup singer's part is arranged. It is memorized. It is practiced beforehand. They know exactly where they're supposed to sing, how they're supposed to sing it, when they're supposed to not sing, and so on. As a second keyboard player, there's no sort of a handbook. <laughs> Most of the times, there's no practice of your part in terms of what you're supposed to play and how you're supposed to play. So this is something we kind of have to figure out on our own. So the first thing I like to think about, or you should be thinking about when you're playing second piano as strings instrument, you have to think about your role is to add texture, to add dynamics, to add depth, not so much harmony. The harmony should be hold down by the main keyboard player. He's playing the chords, he's playing all of that stuff. He's helped carrying the rhythm of the song. The auxiliary's role is to add texture. So the first thing we're adding with the strings is sort of texture. You can make the texture dense or you can make it more thin. And this is something that you're going to be playing, playing with throughout the song, thin versus fat. And what you're following is when the song builds up, you know, gets more louder, more sort of to the, the, the heavy part of the song, that's when you can start exploring more of the upper register. That's when you can start exploring more of the full chords. But in the beginning, you sort of back off. So if you listen to me play the intro again, I sort of start nice and strong with the intro. And then for verse one, I am very subtle. I'm even more deeper in the register, just sort of playing one or two notes. Check it out. So big. I'm keeping it small. I'm keeping the lines sort of more narrow. I'm not playing anything beyond a triad at that point. See, I just even get the left hand out of the way because I don't need it. So I'm doing stuff like. And then I might do. Because another role of string instrument is you want to listen, think, think like a violinist. Violinist is moving and playing beautiful lines throughout an orchestral piece. And so you try to emulate that. Same thing with the cello. So like in this lower register, we're like viola, cello, territory right there. And so at that point, I'm starting to use a lot more moving in thirds. And I'm doing a lot of legato fingering. So, you know, it's like you're thinking like an organist at this point. You've got to use a lot of legato fingering. You can use a pedal as assistant too, but you have to be very delicate with the pedal because the notes will start to overlap and you get stuff like this. You, hear, you can't hear any definition because the pedal is not changing. So... I try to do as much using finger legato and just touch the pedal every now and then to, to, to connect certain notes that I'm not able to uh, connect with the fingers. So I'm moving a lot of finger legato. So that's the first thing. 
you have to listen carefully and follow the dynamic sort of movement of the song. When the song is big and loud, you get big and loud, and that's when you can use full chords, start using a lot of the upper register. When the song gets more quiet, drop the left hand out completely and just do single notes or just thirds in the right hand. And also, you know, the strings is dynamic. Also, touch responsive. And so you play lightly to get your volume down. I'm not messing with the volume knob. Try to do it with your hands. Yeah? Because the strings, if you're using some good strings, it's going to be touch responsive. So you play hard, it gets heavy, gets loud. You play soft, it gets softer and quieter. So that's, that's, that's the first thing right there. So you move with the, 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 the flow of the song and you drop out notes as need be. You have to be following the harmony of the song. So you're not making up your own chords, you still have to follow the chord structure. This is where inversions comes in handy because to get that nice sort of um, interesting strings going, you can't just play chords as you would play a piano. You have to think more linear and melodic. So if I continue playing. I'm still keeping track of where the chords are throughout the song. And then to keep things interesting, I'm playing melodic lines within the scale, but I'm also moving through my chords in inversions. Another thing that I'm doing, I'm listening to make sure that I'm not playing the same voicings as the main keyboard player. Because, you know, the whole thing of the second keyboard player is to add some contrast. And so if you're playing the exact voicing in the exact register as the main keyboard player, then it just sounds like a doubling. And it, rem and, it and it takes away from that distinction and that texture, right? So I try to make sure I'm using different voicing and that's why that's the beauty about strings because if you hear that you're on the same chord voicing, you can just move to another voicing in a nice melodic way. So that's why you have that sort of living, breathing, moving water flowing feel with the strings because it's all about moving and creating room for the other instruments. I'm also listening to the vocal line to make sure I am not playing the melody, doubling up the vocal line. There are a few places where we might hit on the same notes, but again, think contrast, think counter. You want to have counter melodies going but they also should complement what's happening with the vocal and what's happening with the first keyboard player. So it's, an, it's a sort of trio dance you got going on. Yeah? Dancing with two people at the same time. It's a constant dance. Or you can think about it as a conversation. If three people are talking at the same time, you can't hear each other. And so if the strings is just playing too much lines and too much movements and doubling up the keyboard player and doubling up the singer, then it, it would sound as if like three people talking at the same time. So you have to sort of give and take to make sure that you're not overpowering anybody. And that's why the second keyboard role is really improvised because the way you dance, the way you move within the song is going to be different with each song. 
based on the density, the structure, the harmony, all of that good stuff. Let's take, let, let, let me play some more for you. It's felt most when it's genuine But I've had my share of That's just some ideas I want to share with you today about playing strings. So if I were to recap, you, the first thing you want to think about is you want to follow the flow of the song. When the song gets loud, you get loud. When the song gets quiet, you get quiet. How do you get loud? You start to explore more of the high register and you can start to play more fuller chords at that point and definitely dig into sort of the velocity, you know, playing more louder. Don't use the volume knob. Try to do it with uh, just touch, touch response and how hard you play the key. Um, to get quieter now, you definitely sort of back off the pressure that you're putting on the key, but also play less notes. At that point, I like to just drop out the left hand completely and I might just thin down the right hand notes to either a single note, single melodic line, and or some sort of a harmony in thirds or sometimes makes sixth as well but that's how you can thin down the left hand and also you can move that's when you also move outside of the upper register you can stay more sort of hidden underneath volume wise and and, and tonic wise tone wise underneath the second keyboard player so you have that nice mellow string still going but it's it's really subtle my melodic lines are slow. They're not fast because strings is not that sort of fast stuff. So your melodic lines are nice and slow, sort of quarter notes for the most part, and you might do some eighth notes 
if necessary. But for the most part, my melodic lines are, are, are short and they're slower, they're not fast. Um, what else did we cover? You really want to utilize your inversions. Stay away from playing the same voicing as the main keyboard player. By using different voicing from him, it creates a nice contrast. And in addition to that, you also want to stay away from playing the melodic line as the vocal. So don't play the vocal line. Try to stay away from that completely and try to avoid playing too much of the melody note. So if the melody is voicing on a particular note, you can voice to it at times, but if you voice to it too many times, again, it starts to sound like you're doubling up the melody and that takes away from the contrast that you're adding to the strings. Playing strings effectively as a second keyboard player, especially in the more improvisatory realm, really takes practice. So what I, would, what I would suggest you do for homework is if you have a way to record yourself playing piano, then do that and then try to just have that playing and play to it as a second keyboard player using strings or pads and just explore, explore because it's through the exploration you're going to find little neat ways and ideas of approaching playing strings, right? So that's all I have today for you. Trust this was enlightening, entertaining, and educational. If you're new to the channel and you like the stuff, you want to get more of it, then hit that subscribe button and remember to hit the notification bell so you can be notified when we post new video. Because if you're just subscribed and you're, you didn't hit the notification bell, you won't know when we post new content. And you wanna stay up to date because every Wednesday we post new video here teaching you practical tips and tricks on gospel music from theory from beginner to advanced we cover everything all right and as always if you want to go even deeper into more structured piano learning piano lesson with warren.com is where we offer a membership for gospel musicians we only teach gospel stuff over there teach you how to play all different types of gospel songs from CCM to old school to hymns and we create them in levels so beginner intermediate and intermediate advanced most of these lessons come with backing tracks so like the one you hear me playing here you get to download that so you can practice with it we offer scores so if you already read music you can use that to your advantage we offer cheat sheets, so if you don't read music, you can still follow the chords along with the, the uh, lyrics of the songs. And we offer a lot of heavy courses that dive deep into theory, so you understand what you're playing and the concepts behind it. And also a lot of courses that covers it. technique, technique building, ear training, and all that wonderful stuff. So check that out, pianolessonwithwarren.com. Until then, keep listening, keep singing, and keep practicing because that's how you'll continue to improve as a musician. And I'll catch you next week, same time, for a, another tutorial. Bye for now.